his delegation in Cuba was a welcome one for the Ghanaian students who saw it as an opportunity to frankly carry across their grievances. It may interest you to know that since the beginning of this program, our problems have always been the same. And it has, it has taken so much time without any definite solution to, to them. For instance, we have always been denied many vital opportunities, such as vocational trips to Ghana at least once during our stay in Cuba, so as to physically maintain the family links as well as abreast ourselves with national events, development programs, and the future problems which, which are likely to face, I mean, which we are likely to face back home. This state of so total isolation, isolation forces us to undergo certain tormenting agonies for not less than 12 years. That is if one wants, if one choose, chooses to win a university course. Occasional Chancellor at Ghana's Embassy in Cuba, Mr. Paul Wintum Kitcher, said in spite of the difficulties, the program has scored many successes. The host authorities regard our program as one of the most successful. Since the beginning of the program, over 1,036 young men have graduated doing various courses. Also, over 200 political, political cadres have passed through programs in Cuba. One of them is now a minister, another is a parliamentarian. These are important achievements of this program. The Foreign Minister, Mr. James Victor Gbehu, and President Rawlings addressed the grievances of the students and raised other issues. I am personally surprised that after these years I've come to Cuba and the same complaints are being made. It means that something is wrong somewhere. Don't misunderstand me. I am not sorry that you brought them up. If you have a complaint, you have a legitimate right to bring out those complaints. And one of the reasons why there has been a turnaround in your country, Ghana, today is because we have a government, a leadership that is not afraid to admit its fault and to make amends. And so we will look at all your complaints in detail, not at this, not necessarily at this meeting, since this meeting is of a short duration. But as your leader was reading the welcome address. His Excellency the President whispered to me that we have got to do something about the situation and we will as a government. <laughs> the question of the inadequacy of your allowances is a perennial one for students, Ghanaian students, all over the world. You probably are looking at the figures of others and saying that yours is not enough. And even those who are receiving those are saying that it's not enough for them, they want some more. I wish I could express this in Spanish. I learned Latin in my time. And there is a favorite Latin phrase that quo plus habent, eo plus cupunt. The more they have, the more they want. <laughs> but times have changed, as Mr. Kitcher said here. And your programs have also changed. 
the tiny ones are gone and you represent the youth of Ghana in every sense of the word. And I want to assure you that we, and I am referring to government, will make it a point to see to it that the uh, students we have in Cuba are not discriminated against. Look at some of these uh, Western trained doctors. The wonders, the wonder, the wonders, the wonder, this. If they don't have this and this and that and that in place, they can't function. Holding us to ransom. They'd like to be paid in dollars, etc. Oh, then in that case, me too, I'd like to ask for Regan's pay. He, I mean, I to, you know, all that just, I mean, I don't pay. <laughs> We're in Ghana and we've got to be realistic. Now, ladies and gentlemen, oh, it was tough holding us to ransom. We were rescued by the Cubans just in time. From your backgrounds, let's face it. I mean, are this some rich people from some rich homes here? Let's face it. When we had to be looking for people. We were not necessarily looking for rich people or the brightest. No. It was those from places, you know, who needed it, deserved it, who could not afford. Instead of giving people a fair chance, you see what I mean? You, 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 they won't grab their relations, etc. Some of them are sick as whatever it is and come and die here and embarrass the Cuban government and they send a word home, spread word as if we're feeding, Cubans are feeding Ghanaians to crocodiles to eat. When they brought diseases from back home, they wouldn't even let them go through medical checkups and things like that. The difference between you and the others is that you, you just don't come and learn academic work, but this place has survived, Cuba has survived because they did, like Soviet Union collapsed because they were using fear. You see what I mean? To manage that society. This society has survived under the giant next door neighbor. Not because of the use of fear or excess fear. I mean, sure, you need, you have to balance some of these things. But it was mainly education. You see what I mean? Commitment, sense of nationalism, etc., etc., etc. Without it, we will not be able to make it. So, look, to acquire an academic, whatever it is, PhD, it's almost meaningless if it does not come with an attitude of commitment. You understand? A missionary-minded, mission-minded sense of purpose to achieve. Ladies and gentlemen, the demands on you will be great. But you're the ones who are gonna, you're the ones who are gonna turn that country around. Why, why are some of your colleagues running away? I love you. How to be, I supposed to be closed down? Oh, what, what, how painful it was. I wish various governments, all, of, all those of us who had our students over there could have contributed to have maintained the Isle of Youth. Because we would have, through the Isle of Youth, we would have been sowing the seeds of the true unity, the true sense of how a, a third world, you know, a, a, a common, a, a mentality that you needed to develop amongst a people. You understand what I'm saying? The distrust, because he's Togolese, he's Ivorian, Francophone, Anglophone, a, a Luxophone, he's from here, he's from there, etc. You see what I mean? You don't get the opportunity to interrelate. Only we do, at our level, you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. How about champagne, whatever it is, we sit and talk, we smile, maybe we hate each other's gun, and then we put you, you, the ones at the bottom, to, to be fighting each other. But the Isle of Youth, I saw it as a breeding ground for, 
you know, the word is ideology. What is ideology? Logic of ideas. Logic of ideas. What's the logic in this idea? You get to know each other. You interrelate. So that the distance amongst you is closed. You see what I mean? So when you're talking about who are you? You know your fellow man from Nigeria, from this country, from this part of Africa, the continent, etc. You know your fellow person from this part of this world, the world, this part of the world. We leave it to them. They, they, they have it. Those universities, they all attend them. We all go to their universities. So we go to their Oxford, and then when we finish, we come. They can tell you guide us. You see what I mean? Because you've got your comrade over there. He's got his comrade. Let's also do the same thing. But she went through trying times. I mean, this is why sometimes they have to take them through, through difficulties. You see what I mean? So they suffer in closed down places like that. Because they know what it means. If you don't know what it means, they, they are the, the strategists, the strategists, they know what I love youth will do to the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope I haven't been too harsh, but I, I, I want to share my gut feelings with you. Hurry up. We'll do our best and come back home. God bless you.